right, hello, hello, hello. It is time for, I was gonna say it's prophetic, Mentorship Monday, but it's not Monday, it's Thursday, but we're about to talk about the prophetic. I am so excited that Prophet Sophia Ruffin is with me tonight. And you guys know it is seven days. We got seven more days until Prophetic Convocation 2018. Seven more days. So here's what I want you to do as you're coming in. I want you to like the page, like the post and share. Like the page, like the post and share, share, share. Are y'all hearing me? All right. We need you to be on your game tonight and share. Don't keep it to yourself. All right. So let me remind you, Prophetic Convocation is coming up. And in one moment, I'm about to put, bring on uh, Sophia Ruffin. She's here with me. Uh, remember, we got a spectacular lineup next week. We kick it off with Sophia Ruffin here in Jacksonville, Florida. Yay. All right. Let me bring her up so we can see her. You know, me and my little graphics. Here we go. And let me pop this other one out. There she is. Hey, you good? I'm good. <laughs> All right, let me see that. All right, very good. So we're excited to have you here today to just talk about what God is doing in your life. Um, so you're taking a deep breath now, right? Well, you're, you're trying to take a deep breath. Yeah, I'm taking a deep breath and relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> Relax. Wait a minute, wait. What's the weather like there in Chicago? You know what? It was actually about 90 degrees today, so it was extremely hot. That's crazy. Wait a minute. What? Yeah, we're in September. But you know what? It's hot in the Midwest. I grew up sidebar. You know, I'm going to do a sidebar every now and then. I grew up in Omaha, Nebraska. So I know what it's like to be in crazy snow. But yeah, anyway. I, like, I love Chicago. I love our snow. It's all I love it. <laughs> you love it. All right. Very good. But let me ask you this. Now, as people are coming up, all right, like the page, like the post and do share. But as they're coming on, let's talk about what God has been doing in your life. Particularly, let's just talk about your conference real quick. Just catch everybody up because we've been seeing all the pictures, seeing all the videos, seeing all the aha moments. Let me ask you this. Did you ever imagine that God would use you like this? Never. Like, you know, it's just a surreal moment. So I've been taking the uh, past few days to like process what all happened. Um, I would have never, never, never imagined. The conference was incredible. The turnout was incredible. My squad, CBK squad was incredible. The speakers. So it's been phenomenal, uh, the deliverance that took place. And so I'm just trying to absorb what all happened and having some uh, surreal moments and saying, wow, God, like you really that you amazing. <laughs> yeah. now, okay, let me ask you this. So what was it like when you... Hey there, folks. We see you. We see you. We're talking about we're talking about CBK squad and all that stuff now. So come on in because then let them let the folks know that we're going to have some serious talks about homosexuality, the church, craziness, all that kind of stuff. But let me ask you this. What was it like that moment when you knew that God had come through for you? I mean, like you went out there and you looked around and you saw the people. What was that like? It was like take a deep breath, all the hard work, all the praying. And, you know, the fasting that went into it, it just all paid off to see God come through. And then I think that being able to look around and see uh, genuine people who really been rocking with me for a long time, supporting that to see their face in the building, you know, that meant everything. You know, a lot of times people act like, oh, I don't need nobody and all this. But it's such a blessing when you can look around and you see people that's really faithful to you and support your ministry in the building. And that just made me feel really good. I know. That's awesome. I know. I mean, it's amazing to, to know how God will um, make your dreams reality, won't he? Won't he do it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he will. Oh, my goodness. All right. So everybody's saying we love you. We love you. Get to see you all that. So let me. I'm Thank doing you. Well. I love you guys, too. And please share this broadcast. We're going to talk and, and, you know, get into some good content. So share this broadcast with your followers. It's going to be amazing. Amen. Very good. All right. So before we uh, start asking the other nitty gritties, tell us about the CBK squad, what that is all about. Because I, I hear you saying now it's a, mo it's a movement, right? Yeah. You know what? CBK squad is really... Um, you know, I played college basketball. I tried out for the WNBA, didn't make it. I always had this athletic uh, thing about myself. The way I uh, function, my personality is really athletically focused, disciplined, coachable, trainable. 
And so uh, when I didn't make it, the Lord had already told me that he had already chosen me to be on a team and I will have a team. And this over, you know, 10, 15 years ago, not looking at and believing that God could raise up a team in the kingdom and allow me to coach some phenomenal people. And so uh, CBK squad is really uh, people who have been through some things, who have been, you know, survivors, overcomers, who God brought out of some very hard cases. You know, many of these people have been delivered from all sorts of perversions, from divorce, depression, suicide, uh, 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 you know, rejection, abandonment, trauma, foster home systems. And so it's really a gathering of people that came back, that survived. And our message is, you know, we come back, kids. We go back into the enemy's camp to pronounce, look, freedom to the captives. And if God set us free, he can set you free too. And it's so amazing because God has really blessed me uh, to, to have these people on my team and the youngest, I believe, is 17. And we have a couple that's like, that's in there like 66, 67. Wow. It's, not, it's no, it's no um, status quo of, of who we are uh, prophetically, apostolically. It's who we are as believers. And if God did it for us, you know, we just want to gather and pronounce, look, we bounce back. And if we came back, you can too. And it's phenomenal. Oh my goodness. It looked phenomenal. I was like, wait a minute. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it was powerful. Um, what from what I could see, and then just seeing all the testimonies and everything, and then I know a big moment for you was being able to uh, minister with uh, Dr. Juanita Bynum and just have her speak over you. Tell me about that moment, man. You know that was surreal as well. You know, you know, I, I, I prophetically, God is so faithful. Um, you know, I, I had testified that ten years ago in two thousand eight, I was just really pretty much walking out of my deliverance process from homosexuality. I had never been to a conference, didn't, wasn't really familiar with the apostolic prophetic and all of that. I showed up at a conference, a Dr. Bynum conference, and it was in a, in a dome, probably 60 to 70,000 people. And I testified how uh, I was way in the nosebleed section. And one of the urshers came all the way to the back, grabbed me, escorted me behind the stage and set me on the front row. This was in 2008. And I was looking around and I'm saying, how did I end up here? Like, what is this? I didn't even yeah. understand the moment. And so um, here it is 10 years later, you see prophecy fulfilled and how God showed me my future 10 years ago and not realizing I was running around a mega dome screaming, God, I want deliverance, help me. And it wasn't about Dr. Bynum seeing me 10 years ago. God saw me and then he honored that and he brought this thing full circle. And um, so being able to, you know, honor her for praying. And, and it was a moment where I remember uh, she was praying years ago that that was a remnant that was going to show up out of the backside of the desert, that God was going to raise up these people out of lifestyles and deliver them and platform them. She was prophesying that years ago. And yeah. so I listened to that prophecy over and over and over. And I said, I, I wonder if I could get her because really her prophecy has been fulfilled. She prayed for a remnant and we hear. And um, so it was amazing to just honor her and then to tag team with her more so to just say, I honor pioneers and I honor those who have pioneered and gone ahead and to be able to just say, thank you for your prayers. It was more to me a token to just say, thank you for praying for me. Thank you for interceding. This thing has come full circle. And now can you please just minister on this platform? And it was just like, God did it. So I just could have passed out and just been done. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that was, that's powerful. But let's talk about this now. You mentioned that that she had prophesied about all this, and we, you know, we prophesy in part. But let's talk about what it really means to you when, when somebody uh, releases a prophecy. Here's what I say: there is nothing like making sure the prophecy is is in your spirit, man. And so I tell people, you want to see a prophecy fulfilled? Oh my goodness! I I went to sleep with a Walkman when that was back in the day. I had those on, and I would just. I would just make sure that every time I went to sleep, I had my prop, my, my prophetic words playing. What was that like for you to see what she said is actually manifesting? Well, it really stirred my faith. I, I, my faith, it just gave me an unshakable faith. 
and to believe that when God speak a thing, it's going to be established. When that thing is declared, it's going to happen. And so many times it's not about um, uh, uh, like when it's going to happen. Right. It's standing on the fact that it's going to happen. And that um, so it just really stirred my faith uh, to believe God that everything he say, everything he prophesied, if he say it, you grab that thing, you believe it and you run with it. And so it just stirred my faith to believe him for the other promises that he promised me. So when the enemy try to make me feel, okay, God is delaying this thing and it's not going to happen. I can't be tormented no more because I've seen God's hand. And regardless of it being a decade later, God's timing is excellent. Mm -hmm. and so it just stirred my faith and my confidence and my trust in the Lord tremendously. Hallelujah. I love that. That's awesome. And so God is, has really done a work in you, but let's talk about church and homosexuality. Let's talk about, uh, from your perspective, let's talk a little bit more about your journey because there's some people who are listening who have no idea. They don't, oops, let me see. Let me do it like that. They have no idea what's going on, but, um, Talk about your journey. How'd you even end up at a, a, a Juanita Bynum conference seeking deliverance? Well, you know, in um, I believe like 2000, late 2003, 2004, um, I gave my life to God accidentally. You know, I just kind of, it was, it was tremendously accidentally, you know, uh, where I showed up in a service to play a prank on a friend because one of my friends was always talking about God. And being that I was in a homosexual lifestyle and I wasn't secret about it. I was very loud about the life I lived. Um, and I, I was more masculine. I was what they call a stud. Mm -hmm. um, so it was very obvious if you saw me at tattoos on my legs and arms and, you know, um, and so it wasn't a secret. And so I wasn't often accepted if I sh showed up in church. Now I grew up in church a missionary Baptist church. So I knew, about God. You know? <laughs> I knew that I loved God. I just didn't understand what that love meant. And because I was in this lifestyle, you know, a lot of people was turned away from me and, you know, they didn't, you know, uh, really receive me well when I would show up in the church. So it really kind of like, I just didn't go to church mm -hmm. because when I would go immediately, I'll hear messages. God didn't make Adam and Steve. And it was such a bash about homosexuality that by the time I left, I was angry. I didn't feel convicted. I felt angry. I felt, you know, judged. I felt mishandled. And so I just completely was like, I can do the God thing on my own. And um, so even when I would go to church, instead of people trying to minister to me to convert my heart and to offer me Jesus who can set me free, they were telling me I need to put on a skirt or I need to put on this. And I'm like, listen, I don't want to dress up my sin. Like, right, right. It's so dark. I'm so far away from a skirt. I need to be saved. Saved. <laughs> trying to dress me. And I was just turned off by people trying to make me look saved when I really just needed to be saved. And so, um, long story short, I ended up showing up at this church. And this apostle, Apostle Tim Brinson, he ministered about a man named Jesus. And he talked about how if you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior, you could be born again. Because my biggest excuse was I was born gay. I was born this way. Right. I right. could recalculate all the way back to being a little girl and having these same sex attractions and didn't know what to do with it. And so when he started talking to me about the blood and about a man named Jesus, Mm. And that if I accept him, I will be free. And if I could be born again, that means then I don't have an excuse to justify why I'm in darkness and that everything will be made new. So that mm -hmm. message, it hit me and I became intrigued. Well, who is this Jesus? Who is this he's talking about? New and Jesus. I just, yeah, I was just like, I want the Jesus this man is talking about. And, you know, God uh, literally apprehended me in the service with a power that was greater than my darkness. I, my demons no longer had control because God pulled me to the altar. And I'm telling you, I tell this story all the time. I tell people going to the altar felt like walking the green mile because I'm like, listen here, God, do not get me down here. Sh don't please. Like I saw people speaking in tongues, falling out. I'm real cool. Right down here and toss me around 
And the Lord just really ministered to me and was telling me, this is your moment. I called you, Sophia. You know, I'm going to do great things in your life. I got need of you. I love you. And he, I start hearing the voice of God. And when I got to the altar, the apostle ministered and prophesied my life like a timeline. And it really just, it blessed me because he never talked about the sin I was in, but he talked about how God wanted to set me free. And from that point on, uh, it was it was history. And I ended up like walking through my process of accountability, submission to leadership. And it wasn't that, uh, if I'm being honest, I didn't just call Turkey to get delivered. No, right. it was a process of coming out of the culture of right. homosexuality to be reintroduced to the kingdom of God. And that took a process. And over that time, I ended up at a Dr. Bynum conference years later, running around, determining that I'm, I'm, I'm going to maintain my freedom. Hallelujah. That's powerful. So you had to go from culture to kingdom. Absolutely. So let's, let's talk about that because, you know, oh my goodness, I hear from so many parents who are going crazy. They're saying, oh my goodness, my, my children are homosexual. They have this, the same sex attraction and they really don't know what to do. And the stuff they say they're going to do, I'm like, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. You don't want to do that. So help us out, help them out. Um, tell us what we're doing wrong as parents, tell us and them what we need to be doing right. And then from so that's one, two. I've got you two questions. Let me get those. Do that first. And then we're going to really hit hard about the church and what the church needs to be doing better. All right. Yeah. I think with parents, sometimes, you know, it's really being attentive, you know, loving your child. And, and really, sometimes parents don't understand that there is accountability as well that parents have. Um, and it's so much. But I'll try to touch on some of the most important things like. For example, you know, if you've rejected, the enemy don't wait until your child become an adult to attack. Those attacks happen at the moment of conception. Mm -hmm. And so at the moment of conception, because rejection, abandonment, trauma, all of those are openings and demonic portals for the enemy to come in. And so a lot of times when parents, I'll just use rejection, for example, some people are failed abortions. They, they mom don't want them and they, they don't want that seed and they rejecting that seed in the womb and, 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 or the dad walk out and, you know, or either the parent is so adamant after they find out they having a girl, they throw a fit. They want a boy, even after it's been determined you having a girl, even, you know, so all of these things, you know, can, can scar, can open up portals and get an enemy access to come in. And because he don't play fair, he attacks instantaneously. Also, you know, when you don't nurture, a lot of times whenever you in homosexuality, you tend to be attracted to the very thing you yearning for. For example, sometimes you will see a woman attracted to an older woman. It's because maybe she lacked being nurtured, validated and loved by her mother. And so right. it's something that this woman is given, vice versa with guys. So it is so many dynamics. But I would tell parents that you have to pray. You have to love your child. You got to love them through. And love do not mean you compromise. And that that's you condone. And that's where a lot of parents get it mixed up. Well, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I don't condone this. Well, you don't have to condone it, but that's, that doesn't mean don't love your child. My mother, she loved me and her love covered my sin. That when people was like, you know what? You need to throw your child away. She's horrible. I look like a disease to people. I didn't look like I could be fixed. I didn't look like, and so people were like, what, would, what what if my mom would have rejected me even the more as rejection will push your child further into the arms of that lover because the enemy will then convince them you all alone you by yourself your own family don't want you and there is a culture that homosexual culture they teach love and unity yes, and they when do. you are thrown away you got a whole community that's going to receive you they introduce you to a new family and so you got to love your child. And remember, when you prayed the first time, then you come on. When you prayed the first time, he heard you. He heard you when you prayed. And just because you don't see it naturally, that's why whenever you're praying, your child may be going through. You walk by faith, not by sight. Right. My mother called me forward through love and said, Providence, come forth. I'm like, yo, what is a providence? <laughs> 
but you got to call your child. You got to call them out. You got to believe God for their deliverance and you got to ask God to give you a balance. Now, because my mother loved me so hard, Apostle, I didn't want to disappoint her, which means that what? I'm not going to disrespect her. I'm not going to bring lovers around her. I'm not going to make her see things that she don't need to see because her love was so beautiful mm. that I didn't want to disrespect her. So we had a balance and the boundary. So parents got to beat up for their kids, quit putting their kids on these prayer lists, and then they disappear. No, you labor. Right. You get in there and you love your baby and you prophesy and declare who they're going to be. And you walk around like, walk off like a boss, believing the God you serve. That if you prayed it, it's already done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, that's, I mean, that's powerful. That, I, I hope everybody really listened to that. Listen, are you hearing the words coming out of her mouth? Love covers. So when it, when it comes to that, though, what would you say then to others outside of the church who are looking, saying, she all wrong. I, I've always been gay because, again, we know it attacks you in the womb. It attacks you prior to that. So then how do you minister to those who have never heard of God? How do you really minister to them? Well, number one, people got to understand same-sex attraction and having same-sex attraction, that's dealing with your sexual orientation. That's dealing with, you know, okay, I'm, I'm attracted to this. That, that has nothing to do with nothing. Okay, we can deal with that, okay? Right, right. But you got to be able to tell them about, you know, not going at people on what they doing wrong, and, and telling them they in the struggle. Cause then now you dealing with a spirit of deception. Cause that deception is telling them they right, you're wrong. And so it's all about using wisdom. And I believe like I had a woman who walked up in me in the grocery store, my pants were sagging and she just walked up on me and pulled my pants up. And I'm like, this lady, <laughs> this lady, like it must've been a God day for her because you just can't walk on nobody doing that and you don't know them. But she was like, felt like, yo, let me just do this. So, and when people would say, Sophia, God want to help you with your struggle. I'm like, what struggle? Cause I'm good. Cause uh -huh. I'm happy with my life. You're not happy, ma'am. So you want to make sure that you use wisdom and ask God to give you a strategy. I always say this, the biggest results you'll get from people that are not believers is to spend time and establish relationships. Get in the boat with people. Go drink coffee. Take them out to lunch. Ask them about their life, not about their sexuality. Like, you could get the most out of me in my past when people would say, hey, Sophia, how about we go have coffee and right. just sit down? We having coffee, and they like, so how, how you doing? I'm doing good. How's life? Good. Then they start asking me personal questions about my family. Or, you know, and you can discern What's the strong man in this person's life? You don't got, they don't got to see you cast the demon out. They don't even have to know that you own to understanding what the root of the problem is. They just going to see, man, you care about me enough to spend time with me because you dealing with the person and not the sin. And that's how you will see tremendous breakthrough. Deal with the person, build a relationship with the person and stop focusing in on the sin. Yes. But man, it seems like that is hard to do with, I'm going to say, church folk. Church folk, especially, no, I was going to say, especially missionary Baptists. See? <laughs> Don't you get me in trouble. <laughs> I grew up Baptist, St. Mark Baptist, Omaha, Nebraska. Love y'all, all y'all. And I go back every time. But you know, you, are, you know exactly what I'm saying and talking about. You got yeah. all these rules and regulations. So how can we expect to show love when, when they come into the church for love and we reject them. Well, I mean, give us a, a lesson on how to treat folk when they come in the church. Because obviously they're coming for something, right? Exactly. When folks come to church, give them Jesus. Just offer them Christ. Like, it's the simplicity of the gospel sometimes that people need, you know, and to love people, to be kind. Like, just show the love of Christ and that'll win many people. I think that, and, and, and honestly, these religious structures and, you know, do this, do that. You're not going to keep this generation like that. Right. I mean, it's just not going to work with all these do's and don'ts. We need to teach them the love of Christ, you know, 
who God is and, you know, spend time building relationship and things like that because all this, don't do this, don't do that. People ain't scared of that. They not, they not going to listen to that. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. So when did you know? I mean, I guess you always knew because it, it was been prophesied to you, but what, when was that moment that you really knew that God called a sign and chose you to really not just help those who are coming out of homosexuality, but to help people like me, those of us in the church who know that we have to be able to minister to folks who don't look like us and don't act like us. When did you know that you were called to really help? Well, I'm gonna have to be honest. Oh boy, that's a oh. good question. You really good. You said that, didn't you? You know how to pull it out. You know, I would say probably the past few years of God really opening doors for me um, and giving me opportunity. I always had this, I had to be forgiven and understand. Like sometimes it's not, the, it's just that people don't know. Yes. And and because you have this little thing, I had this thing like, man, you know, the church, they horrible. They did this, they did that. But honestly, we need the church. And it's just that people don't know. And some of the stuff that and, and the way people handle people is because they just don't know. And the Lord started ministering to me, said, Sophia, you know, how would they know unless I send someone who can help bring that level of education that level of assistance community and merging we skilled in a lot of areas but that's why you know uh whatever you come out of you're the expert of that you're the expert of that information and this has been a a, a issue that i've really divided the you know church that's why so many it's not that it's that's why you got them sneaking in the church undercover it's like my god no yes. i want to deal with this um and educate people so that we know how to bridge the gaps and how to merge it. So over the past few years, as I've been traveling, I've met different leaders. Uh, some leaders I've met with, their children are going through and they've been ashamed. They've been, they've been ashamed and that's been like a barrier to their ministry breaking through and breaking out because of what's happening in their private life. And so the Lord had to open up a level of compassion to really tell me, Sophia, this is your assignment. Don't uh, just say what people aren't doing. It's just that they don't know. Educate them on some of these strategies and help, you know, offer material. And that's why I do webinars. You know, I try to offer material and say, hey, this information will help you. And so once I've learned that it's my assignment and I've learned that it's not that people are just cruel, they just don't know. And I ask God to give me wisdom and the compassion to really present information to people because in that area, people are typically closed off. They don't want to deal with it, but the Lord is beginning to soften people's hearts because you're dealing with it. It's in your face. It's in your youth department. It's here and we have to address it. Amen. Well, and you know, my motto with the prophets and the prophetic, I always tell everybody, look, y'all, you don't know what you don't know. And Absolutely. if you don't know what you don't know, then, you know, you, 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 you can't be, you, there's no way you can even help because you don't know what you don't know about. And then people are overly confident in what they don't know. And so that is awesome. And I'm glad you said that because now it's like, not only, okay, we, we know we're dealing with it in the music department. Yes. We know we're now, it's the end thing now, from my perspective, when what I see and all it's in, I mean, as te teenagers, they go either way now and they don't really and they don't really care. So we've got to be educated and we got to know how to minister. Um, let me ask you this. What was one of your greatest moments in ministering um, to someone who really was able to see the light because of your ability? God giving you the gift to minister to them. You know what? It's been so many it, literally for the past two years, every place i I have went to minister. It's a seal when I leave that there's a deliverance. Something happens. It it just I've had people where this one guy was at a meeting. And this homosexual guy was at a bus stop. He wasn't even a part of the meeting. The meeting going on. You had to register. Somehow he shows up inside with his bags. Looked like he had been out all night. And he come into the meeting. He asked, could he get in? They let him in. He sits in the back. And I'm just ministering my story. He just starts screaming and crying out. He want to be free. And 
you know, and all of that. And I mean, minister deliverance to him. And I said, how, after a while, I said, how did you end up hearing about this? He said, I kept hearing a sound coming out of this, out of the church. And ah. I was curious of what was going on. And God drew him into that place to get his deliverance and to get his freedom. And then it's service after service where, you know, people are just crying out. I just recently just at Walmart two days ago, a couple like came to my conference on Friday, didn't get to meet me on Tuesday. I'm in Walmart and they run into us in Walmart. And the young lady said, I just want to be free. I can't do this no more. And immediately like the, it's like, it's so many. So I'm, I have so many moments of these of people and then being able to teach people that, you know, God wants to take you on your process. We be so fast to dress people up and make them look free. But I believe God really wants to allow people that's coming out. Cause see with homosexuality, some people are in the culture. Like they are living in a foreign culture because they've been there so long. They don't even know what it's like to be free. Right. And so they have to come out of the whole demonic system. And it takes a process and it takes somebody that got legal authority to help them break into that system, to pull them out and to introduce them to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. All right, folks, you're watching this. Now, look, uh, we got about, th we got 30 minutes left, maybe 30 or less. Here's what I want you to do. Like this page, like this post and share. And if you know somebody who needs some answers, have them watch here now. And don't forget, Sophia Ruffin will be with us here in Jacksonville in seven days. Next Thursday, the 27th, uh, at the airport Doubletree for Prophetic Convocation 2018. Ah, we already know. We already know what's about to happen. We already know. You know, this is deliverance territory. You know, we got all kinds of deliverance ministries up in here. So, so you just need to come on out. If you ever need a reason, this is a reason. But like this post, like, and share, share, share. Um, all right. I'm trying to make sure I catch everything because I know we don't have a lot of time because I definitely at the end, we're going to have her pray. We're going to have her pray for us. We need some prayer. We're going to have her do that. Um, all right. What else would you like to add? What else do you think are some of the important? Now, I'm not going to she's not going to talk about everything. We're just giving you all a little bit of a little bit of something, something so you can come on out. We're just trying to open the door so people really can get delivered. I think what I really want you to talk about is tell me how important is it? For people to just tell the truth and admit where they are. That right there is the transparency. People have, I was actually preaching Saturday at my conference and I was telling the people transparency is everything. Right. And I was telling them how Sophia Ruffin stay free. Can I, how I stay free is that the Bible says when you cry out, God will deliver you from all your trouble. I learned to just cry out to God and, and, and be accountable. Find somebody that you could be vulnerable to and you can trust and let them know where you at in your process. And I told them, I said, can I be honest? Sophia Ruffin is a walking billboard for the power of darkness. Everybody not happy about me testifying about my freedom. So I'm a walking billboard and understanding that every level at the threshold of every new season in your life, there's going to be temptation. That's why I don't believe in these people that go viral without accountability. Mm. Because that. <laughs> I don't believe in it. I, I try to tell people I didn't just go viral. Like I've been doing this stuff. I'm, I'm 11 years clean and sober. So it's right. been 11 years wow. proven of my victories. Now, I try to tell people the truth is the truth will make you free. People will think that because they have temptation that they still bow, but you would not be tempted if you were still there. The temptation is the evidence that you're not where you used to be. And you have to be truthful with somebody and say, listen, apostle, I'm being tempted in this area. What is this? It, temptation is looking for a response and it's the test to see how you will respond. So at the threshold of every new season, every victory, the enemy is coming to try and test you. And you have to be able to be transparent Hallelujah. At the testing season, don't don't be tested and keep that thing a secret. Right. I have some accountability partners and I just be like, hey, you know, this is a season I'm in. Cover me. Pray for me. 
watch over me so that you are able to maintain your freedom. Hallelujah. That's it. The truth will set you free. Cause when you tell the truth, oh my goodness, it, it shocks the enemy. When you tell the truth, it's like you can see the demons re repelling back too. Okay. Michelle Mingo says, how do you reach those that truly like the lifestyle? Michelle Mingo, listen, I like the lifestyle. I was in it. You're not in something you ain't enjoying. Even though, you know, you're not trying to necessarily, like if they like it, you just do your part. Drop your seed and keep it moving. You okay. know, a lot of times, we try to see the manifestation of the seed we drop and you may not see it. You may not see it five years later. They may come and say, Apostle, what you said, you sold a seed and I've been uncomfortable ever since. So you drop your, your seed and you keep it moving and you begin to pray, God, I deposited what you gave me. I'm believing you for freedom. And understand that when it's demonic, it's going to look worse before it get better. And half the time, folks will act like they ain't listening, but drop that seed, they going to go home feeling a conviction and they can't figure out why. Because I would be like, now why I'm feeling bad? Now I was all, <laughs> who I've been around? I never felt bad about what I'm doing. Who is this? But somebody may have dropped the seed and that seed will begin to marinate and you will begin to see that seed yield results. Hallelujah. So what you're saying is essentially, it's essentially the, the seeds matter. So no matter what you see, when God tells you to pray for somebody, even in the middle of the night, when God begins to bring people to you who are loving the lifestyle, what you're saying is pray, prophesy, do whatever God tells you to do because the seed of the truth matters. Yeah. And then the look, absolutely. And a look at it, a person that's in adultery, they liking that they in oh, adultery. Yeah. And it, if they wasn't, they would be out of it. So you got to understand that homosexuality is not a disease that's uncurable. Like, you know, and because we've made it like this foreign thing mm -hmm. that the enemy, the enemy got this false power. It's, it's a sin that can be dismantled. Hallelujah. I like that. I'm going to put that up. Homosexuality is not a disease. Oh, you know, you're going to ruffle some feathers right there. What does that mean? I, I heard you, but just hit on that just a little bit more. Then we're going to keep it moving. Like people act like it's a disease. Like if I get around this person, I'm going to catch it. No, the only way you're going to catch it, ma'am or sir, is if you got something in you that's open. Like you ought to have enough power that it ain't going to transfer on you. Or like they treat it like, I don't want to even touch that. You know, uh, mm -hmm. it's, I don't, I'm back in the way. No, you deal with that thing. Address it. You know, and it, and you just address it in love. And I think it just comes from having wisdom on how to handle it. Amen. Very good. You are speaking and teaching tonight. They getting excited out there. All right. One more time. Like the page, like the post and share. And then we're about to close out with prayer. And I'm saying that you're going to be with us next week. I don't know. I'm like, I don't even know what I'm expecting. I don't know what I'm expecting. I'm going to just be like, God, have your way. That's why we're like, God, have your way. But you know, I want, I, we definitely want you to tell your story, but um, tell us what more is got, what more is on your schedule coming up and what other things are, does God have planned for you? You know, uh, one of the new things I just launched upon is my new children book that'll be available in like two weeks. And it's called uh, Coach Soap to the Rescue. Uh, this particular character said, I'm not a tomboy and is dealing with bullying, but it was actually the little me. Um, how before I even knew what being gay was, I was bullied because I was an athlete and because I like to dress a certain way. And that's another way that the enemy come in to plant demonic seeds in the kid's head. Like I'm 11 years old. All I knew was I was athletic and I love sports and I t typically like doing what the guys was doing. And I was labeled gay. I was labeled a tomboy. And so I started saying, well, I'm a tomboy. I'm a tomboy. And what is being gay? So I took on the language that was spoken to me, not just by peers, but by adults, yes. you mm. know, that was saying these things. And I didn't have nobody to help me be able to stand up for myself and say, no, I'm not a tomboy. I'm just a girl that like basketball. I'm just a girl that like to dress comfortable. And so it's being able to deal with young ladies and young people that's already their identities are under attack to, to break it before it even starts. 
um, and to teach people how to minister to their kids when they're different or when they seem different. Because a lot of times parents will tell a little boy, don't be no sissy. Put that dial down. Don't do, you know, we have to be careful of the language we speak in. And so um, I'm working on now really trying to get inside the school system and get in the marketplace. You know, I don't got time to fight over these pulpits and stuff. I'm trying to impact a whole whole generation. So I'm going after these young people in the schools. Um, and uh, so that's what I'm doing right now and just really um, just having fun. And just having a lot of fun in ministry and just doing whatever God had me to do. Amen. All right, good. So y'all can go to SophiaRuffin.com. I see somebody's putting up SophiaRuffin.com. That's where you can go to find out more about Sophia Ruffin. Congratulations on all that God is doing and this children's book. I'm excited to see this. Thank you. Hallelujah. All right, here's what we're going to do. Now, look, folks. If you are anywhere near Jacksonville, Florida, some of y'all, y'all didn't make it to Chicago even though half the world made it to Chicago. We saw that. I was like, whoa, y'all did. But some of y'all are still here. Look, make come to prophetic convocation. The, the Thursday night and Friday night evening worship services are free. We prefer that you register though. So go to prophetic convocation.com prophetic convocation.com. What does that mean? That means this is a holy time in the Lord. We're about to lay some hands on some prophets, pull prophets through. This is a good place for prophets to come and be nurtured and pushed off to destiny. And it's just going to be a great environment. And uh, Sophia Ruffin is kicking it off that Thursday. So seven days, seven days, seven days. Go to propheticconvocation.com. She'll be here with us. And I think I've hit everything. All right. I'm going to let you close us out. You can say if you whatever you want to do, you know, say something to the people and then close it out in prayer. All right. Well, I really had fun on your broadcast because you got the good questions and you keep it going. So thank you for having me. Uh, as I said, it's an honor to um, really be a part of what God is doing. And so, yeah, if y'all in Jacksonville, please come. It's going to be phenomenal. I do believe God's going to move in deliverance, miracle signs and wonders. And I try to tell parents, you know, a lot of times they try to get their kids to come or their young people to come. God is not bound by geographical location. So if your son and daughter is not there, you be in the building and we can make some declarations and God will send angels and send his minister angels to set your children free. So I just really recommend being in the building because I believe God wants to do something supernatural. And so thank you again for having me. I'm I'm always pumped up. So, yo, yes, y'all yes. come ready. Be excited about God. So uh, you want me to just pray? Yeah, you pray us out. Pray us out. Just pray, pray over the people. All right. So, Father, I thank you even just for this moment, all those that are on. Father, we just believe your word. And we know that when we decree things, this shall be established. And we just make a bold declaration that every person under the sound of my voice that are dealing with addictions, habits, perversions, or any form of sin that makes them feel that they cannot be free, that you are the God that set captives free. And I thank you that you're raising up deliverers. And even as you raised up Moses, you're raising up Moses for such a time as this, who will go into the enemy's camp to dismantle the works of the enemy and set your captives free. I I prophesied that generations are going to be delivered by the millions. There's going to be a mass exodus and your sons and daughters are going to be set free. I thank you, Lord, that prodigals are coming home. Those who have children and loved ones that are sleeping with the pigs that are in a low place, that you're sending angels now to minister to your sons and daughters, to bring them out of darkness. You're going to show them your light, your glory, and they're going to be fascinated by your glory and the fear of the Lord is going to come upon them and you're going to cause them to be astonished with what you're going to do in their life. I thank you that you are raising up a generation who will seek you. We will seek after your face. We will love you. We will honor you. We'll reverence you. And we just declare that this is an hour where a remnant is coming back, bouncing back, that's coming to destroy the works of the enemy. I thank you, Lord, that every chain that held us back, every, every bondage that held us back, every cave that we were locked in every prison cell that we were locked in that that those shackles and those doors are kicked down and you're raising up a remnant who will gather in unity and oneness to declare that jesus christ is lord so father we just bless your name and i just prophesy that those who are on here that have loved ones and parents that have been tormented and feeling like they've made a mistake or or what did they do wrong and what happened 
Father, that you will minister to them tonight and let them know that when they prayed the first time, you heard them. And I thank you, Lord, that you're not just going to send angels in this season to minister to them, but you will come yourself and you will speak to them. I pray that you will comfort parents and you will give them balance. You will give them wisdom. You will show them how to love without compromise. And Father, many of them that feel discouraged and feel defeated and want to throw in the towel and give up on their baby. I thank you, Lord, that right now they hope is being stirred again. They're being stretched. They're being challenged. Let my testimony encourage them that there is nothing too hard for you, that you are the God of miracles and the God of breakthrough and the God of signs and even wonders. So Father, I thank you that there is a generation arising who will give you the glory for what you're doing in our lives. And I just pray favor, peace, prosperity, blessings. Let doors be open unto them. Let new songs come upon them. Let this be a time, a new season, new harvest. And those who have been sowing seeds, seeds of prayer and intercession, let them see the manifestation of their prayers without delay. So, Father, I prophesy that what you have set aside for Jacksonville will be something that has have not been heard of. Let a sound go out in Jacksonville. Let the anointing hit Jacksonville. Father, let this mandate be heard in the earth and let many come running to this meeting, not just for another meeting or another service, but let them show up and expect dunamis power and transformation. Father, we declare that your hand is upon this conference and I speak blessings over it. And I declare that it's going to be testimonies after testimonies after testimonies testimonies after testimonies and there will be breakthrough and the miraculous will show up we ask for the god of might to show up the god of wisdom to show up the god of counsel to show up we send forth the god of abraham isaac and jacob in jacksonville and we cut off every witch every warlock every jezebel every demonic influence every demonic system that would attempt to hijack this assignment we break its powers and we say angels draw your swords dip it in blood and fire and set your place in Jacksonville as this assignment is heard in the heavens let it be results yielded in the earth and we say unto you that this will be a conference where miracle signs and wonders will become the norm in Jesus name Hallelujah. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. All right, folks, don't forget it's next Thursday. We kick it off. Propheticconvocation.com. Prophetic Convocation is at Doubletree at the airport in Jacksonville. Sophia Ruffin is going to be here with us. Jay Patrick is going to be here. Ron Tolliver is going to be here. Chazden Strickland is going to be here. And the GICMP prophets are going to be here too. We're excited and God bless each and every one of you. All right, as you end tonight, like the page, like the post, and share, share, share. All right, God bless you, Sophia. We appreciate you. Prophet Sophia, God bless you. God Thank bless you so much. You. Thank you for having me, and I'll see you in a week. Amen. God bless you. See you later.